and from Mark 12, verse 30. Love the Lord God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. So we light the candle today for love. Only one more to go and it's Christmas. But there's one more to go, so we've got time. Thank you, Deb. It's time for a prayer. So, Holy Spirit, in this time of prayer, we affirm the presence of your light and your love. As we relax, we allow ourselves to be guided by the love of God. As we develop a love consciousness, we feel divine love at work within us, causing us to see ourselves and others in the right light, the light of love. Divine love mends differences, creates joy, and opens hearts and lives to unlimited blessings. The more love is shared, the more it grows. It can be shared and felt by people in the same room or separated by miles. Let us remember there is only one love, God's love. It becomes the guiding force of our lives. God loves us no matter what, and for this we are grateful. And so it is. Amen. As we say the unity, uh, worldwide affirmation and the unity of aims affirmation, I invite you to think of them as a prayer and holding them in collective intention. So please join me in saying unity worldwide affirmation. Together, there, there is one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God the good. And the Unity Church of Ames affirmation together. Through the Christ Spirit in us, we create a better church and a better world. So be it. Okay, thank you. You may be seated. And Lynn is going to read the name word for us today. Thank you, Lynn. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The word for today is love. I look for and find ways to express love. Love is the most powerful force in the universe. It harmonizes and heals. It finds ways to connect us when there seems to be no way. As I prepare for the celebration of the birth of Jesus, I am reminded of the power of love. A newborn baby, after all, is the very essence of love. My love finds expression as kindness to strangers. It also finds form in the love of friends and relatives. The gifts I give and receive are symbols of the warmth and affection we share. I give the gifts of compassion as I pray for those in need. I show love with each smile or kind word I offer to others. In, re in return, I felt even greater love. Love is multiplied as it is given away. Love one another, John 13, 34. You may be seated. And I believe Rev. Deb is up now. Okay. So the lesson is uh, love, life, and praise. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <coughs> it's the 13th, so we're getting closer and closer and closer. I'm glad those young girls have all of their Christmas preparations done. <laughs> I do want to know how they do it. All right. So we're here on the third Sunday of Advent, and it's our second week in the, our journey spiritual power of life, or life itself as a spiritual power. Last week
week we wrestled with the notion of I gotta get a life. <laughs> okay? We all have that experience. I gotta get a life. Now this week we wrestle with now that I have a life, what do I do with it? Now that I realize that I have one, what do I do with it? And that's the rub, isn't it? That's always the deal. Because how far do I go with this life? How far do I take it? How, how far do I let it take me? What is it, the song? They say that falling in love is wonderful. It's wonderful till it isn't. <laughs> so we've all had that experience of life being just wonderful until it isn't. And then it goes a little bit sour, and things change, or you change, and a relationship falls apart, or something really breaks open, and then your heart breaks, and you cry, and you wonder, why did you let yourself get in so deep? How did you land in this mess anyway? Why did you take that risk and end up here? once again. And this blessed mess can actually happen with anything, anywhere, anytime. And yet there's always a blessing in the mess, right? If we let ourselves have the opportunity to wrestle with the angel till we get the blessing. There is a scripture about that in the Old Testament. Jacob wrestles with the angel all night and won't let the angel go until the angel blesses him. Metaphysically, angels, after all, are divine ideas. And it is in that wrestling with love, with life, that divine ideas are born into manifestation, into this existence, in this manifestation we call life. Praise God from whom all blessings flow, because it's all good even when it doesn't feel like it. Okay, so this was a week I wrestled with the talk, and I went online, and I had to find all kinds of stuff about what other people have said about life in this journey, and they have said a lot. Um, it was interesting, and it was amusing, so I, I had to bring some of it to you. This is one of these talks that's going to have a lot of quotations in it, because in looking for these, I stumbled over a document that I had saved that had all these quotations in it, and it was like, oh, I forgot that was there. Oh, let's read that. Oh, well, that's good. That's good. So it was finally time to harvest that uh, saving of all these quotations. The first one about life is from Ashley Brilliant, who is, I think, a sociologist and researcher. And what Ashley Brilliant says, if you're careful enough, nothing good or bad will ever happen to you. And then Tony Campolo, and I've heard this one before, maybe you have too, and he is also a um, spiritual teacher. So many people tiptoe through life so carefully to safely arrive at death. Ooh. Somebody related to that. And then from Scott Peck, the, um, you know Scott Peck, right? What gives life great meaning and focus is that we have a deadline. I think so. And then this one was good from our very own Mark Twain. Let us endeavor so to live that when we come to die, even the undertaker will be sorry. <laughs> you can count on Mark Twain for a good laugh, yes. And then this is one, Justin Mogliski, he is a, a millennial. And his, he's a researcher, a sociologist, I believe. And he is 26 years old, and what he says, in life everything will be okay, as long as you don't define okay. <laughs> Wise young millennial, okay. Then from Thomas Lamance, which I think we've all probably heard, life is what happens to us while we were making other plans. 
Oh yeah, <laughs> been there, done that. And then this one was really good. And this gentleman, Louis Adamick, is a researcher and um, scholar in other faith traditions and the sociology of uh, their um, faith traditions. And Lewis tells us, my father, my grandfather always said that living is like licking honey off a thorn. <laughs> Been there too. They had to have a t-shirt for that one, don't you think? So from our collective race of consciousness, we discern with laughter and truth the reality that we all struggle with this whole spiritual thing of life, this whole journey of life. And we do it with humor, love, and by the grace of God, and not always gracefully, and often with humility. But the invitation is to take the risk of really engaging in life, really jumping in with wholehearted energy. It's kind of like the hokey pokey, you know that one? You put your whole self in, you take your whole self out, you put your whole self in, and then life spins you all around, right? Have you seen the t-shirt that says the hokey pokey? Maybe that is what life is all about? It might be. It just might be. That's what it is all about. One of my favorite quotes about life comes from Teilhard de Jardin. Do you know Teilhard de Jardin? He, is, he was a paleontologist. That was his career. But he was a spiritual um, master. And his writings were published posthumously after he died. The, church, the Catholic Church did not publish these. He got them to someone who published them in the 50s after he was gone. Uh, he was a French Jesuit. What he said, we are not human beings having a spiritual experience. We're spiritual beings having a human experience. We are not human beings having a spiritual experience. We are really spiritual beings having a human experience. Our essence is spirit. And our task and the invitation is to wake up to our life as spiritual beings, having this human experience, realizing our deep, deep connection with that that is bigger than we are. There's another quote I want to share with you, and it's from Kabir. Kabir is a 15th century Indian Hindu mystic, a poet, and was a Hindu saint. Kabir said, take a pitcher of water and set it down in the water. Now it has water inside and water outside. We mustn't give it a name, lest silly people start talking again about the body and the soul. So, I have an object lesson today, because here's how that looks. We take a pitcher of water, and we have this pitcher of water with water, and we set it down in the water. The essence, even though there's a boundary of all of us, is that same water. We declare our boundaries, and we want healthy boundaries. But we're all that same water, that same essence, that common water of spirit. Now, it can be confusing. Where do I start and someone else, I end and someone else starts? What are the boundaries all about? In truth, as Mark Nepo says, one of my favorite authors in the Book of Awakening, he says, we are not always eloquent or clear in what comes out. But everyone is clear as water at the source place where mind and heart are one. Everyone is clear as water in the source place where mind and heart start as one. So when we were tiny, tiny infants in that essence 
We were all one, and we developed boundaries, but the truth of it is, we get back to that essence where we are all the same energy, that same energy of God. What Nepo goes on to say is that despite our struggles for identity, who am I? Despite the weight of living, there is an irrepressible ounce of spirit in each of us. A wellspring we carry within that can be blocked but not contained. It can be blocked but not contained. It emanates through all beings, all beings everywhere, as the longing for love and peace. All beings everywhere share that same essence. And he continues, when opening our longing, that's jumping in, our honest want for love, we open the fountainhead of spirit, and then, like Kabir's pitcher, we are water living in water, love living in love, a small thing alive in a big thing alive a breath inside a wind. When we allow ourselves to open our longing, our honest want for love. That's what this whole power of life is really all about. When we open our hearts and we allow ourselves to embrace life, the spiritual power of life, life as a spiritual power, our life is a spiritual power, then we, we stay connected with that source, that life-giving water that we are. We stay connected and we step into wholehearted living and we embrace everything, all of it, that life offers us. Then we really learn where we're hanging out in consciousness. When we jump in wholeheartedly, we find out where are we living in consciousness? Because it's in the moments of greatest trial, the moments of big challenge, that we really find out where we are. If we're saying yes to life, and we lean into the experience, then we pray, we cry, we sing, we rejoice, we suffer, and we contribute our tears, our holy water, to that fountain of life. If we say yes, we allow spirit to open us, to open our hearts, to expand our capacity to love more fully, and to love without the fear of losing anything in the process. To love wastefully without being afraid of losing anything in the process. Because we all are alive in spirit. Now, Eckhart Tolle, see I told you I found all these quotations. Remember him, the power of now, the good earth, I think that's... We have the choice to step back. We don't have to live wholeheartedly. We can live watching life go by. But Eckhart Tolle describes it this way. The best indicator of your level of consciousness is how you deal with life's challenges when they come. Through those challenges, an already unconscious person tends to become more deeply unconscious. And a conscious person more intensely conscious. You can use a challenge to awaken you, or you can allow it to pull you into an even deeper sleep. There is so much fear in the world right now. We can allow that to pull us into unconsciousness, or let it call us into even greater consciousness of our oneness with all of creation, in our essence, we're all the same thing. We're all that God energy, no matter what we believe, how we behave, what we do, where we live, who we worship, what we call God, we are all the same thing. 
saying yes to waking up to the truth that you're really a spiritual being. Having a human experience isn't for the faint of heart. It requires great courage to put your whole self in. The word courage, the Latin root for that is core, which is heart. It requires love to say yes and put your whole self in. To say yes to really showing up in your life. But you're not alone. We're all swimming in that same universal energy of God life. By virtue of our very breath, our Bebo, breathe in, breathe out ministry, we are in that energy of God. And in order to really grasp what that's all about, we have to get in the game. You really can't understand what swimming is like until you get wet. You don't know what water's like until you get wet. I mean, maybe that's why we have the baptism, right? That whole water business of baptism just awakens the energy of that God life in us. That's all that it really is about. We have to put our whole selves in the game. Thich Nhat Hanh, that's my next quote. And his book is from Peace is Every Step, Not Two. Peace is Every Step, Not Two. And here's what he says. When we want to understand something, we cannot just stand outside and observe it. We have to enter deeply into it and become one with it in order to really understand. In Buddhism, we call this kind of understanding non-duality, not two. So when I put my whole self in and I get wet and I allow myself to feel that, and then I recognize how someone else is wet, that their tears are flowing. I have great compassion and empathy. And I realize in that holy moment, my oneness, that my heart beats like their heart. My feet move like their feet. My consciousness opens like theirs does. We enter deeply into life. And in doing that, we, we learn to love, to laugh, to play, to pray, to grow, and to connect with others in ways we never knew was possible. Our heart might break, but it's better to be alive with a broken heart than just sitting on the side wondering what that might be like. In that process, there is great joy in this opening to life, and letting life break you open, you open to more than you can possibly imagine, more good than you can possibly imagine, more healing. There is great praise and great joy when we open. And we don't compromise healthy boundaries, but we don't cut ourselves off from the essence of who we are. We embrace the reality that we're all seeking the same thing. No matter what you look like, where you live, what your religious practice is, we're all really seeking that one thing. We're like that. I was at the Arla meeting, and last, the last month in um, November, I told them about the Parliament of the World Religions and the image of all the world's religions like different slices of pizza. And we all have different toppings. But the slices are all pointing to that same center. And it takes all of them to make the whole. And somebody said, I haven't forgotten that. It's like, woohoo! An image that we are all spiritual pizza, right? <laughs> pointing to that same wholeness. We all want the gifts of the Spirit, no matter what we call it love, joy, and peace. And they are all at the center of a life lived in spirit. A life lived in the power, the spiritual power of life. Now I have to quote a unity person, so here's H. Emily Cady. And she was a teacher to Charles Myrtle, and she wrote the book Lessons in Truth. 
And if you become a licensed teacher, you will slog through lessons in truth, and it will change you in ways you couldn't possibly imagine. She wrote in the 1920s, so her language is of that era. And here's what she says. In some way, after all our seeking for the light and truth, we must learn to wait, each one for himself, upon God for this inner revelation of truth and our oneness with God. The light that we want is not something out there that God has to give. It is God himself. God does not give us life. God is life. God is light and life and love. More of himself in our consciousness then is what we all want. No matter what other name we may give it, that's what we all want. Emily Cady was onto something back in 1928. And it is in God that we live and move and have our being in God life. So it's our journey to celebrate, to praise what we experience, to let spirit do its perfect work in us. Let spirit open us. And to lean into the growth and enjoy the journey. Put your whole self in. This is the Christmas of the hokey pokey. Put your whole self in. Usually I close with a, a personal story, but I found another story that was just too good not to share with you today. And this one is from a dying spiritual leader, is an advice from a dying spiritual leader, a Catholic nun, a mother superior in a convent. And it goes like this, and we'll, we do well to heed her advice, lest we take ourselves and our lives too seriously. In a convent in Ireland, the 98-year-old mother superior lay dying. The nuns gathered around her bed, trying to make her last journey comfortable. They tried giving her warm milk, to drink, but she refused it. One of the nuns took the glass back to the kitchen, and then remembering a bottle of Irish whiskey <coughs> that had been received as a gift the previous Christmas, she opened it, and she poured a generous amount into the warm milk. Now back at the Mother Superior's bed, they held the glass to her lips. The frail nun drank a little, then a little more, and before they knew it, she had finished the whole glass down to the last drop. As her eyes brightened, the nuns thought it would be a good opportunity to have one last talk with their spiritual leader. Oh, Mother, the nuns asked earnestly, please give us some of your wisdom before you leave us. And she raised herself up in bed on one elbow, looked at each of them and said, don't sell that cow. <laughs> your whole self in. Let's take that into meditation.
it out. And as you continue to breathe and allow your heart to open and allow your energy and attention to just drop into your heart space, Feel your wholeheartedness well up from source. Your wholehearted ability to love, ability to have compassion. Have compassion for the other. Have compassion for yourself. Have compassion for the suffering. of the quiet of your heart. Feel the stillness and the oneness in the water. The stillness and the oneness in your being with all of creation. And just breathe. Breathe into the willingness to put your whole self in. And just breathe in and breathe out. As we sit now for a moment in the silence. In that silence. In this busy time of year, in this complex, fragmented world, with our very breath, we affirm that we are spiritual beings having a human experience, and that we are alive in the life of God. We are little emanations of God light here on earth. Whenever we feel separate, we just return to the breath, return to the water, return to the air, knowing that we are one. So let's come back to this time and this place and sing one more time about love and Christmas. <laughs>
protects us, and the presence of God washes over us.